All right, today you're going to learn about dictionaries. And no, I'm not talking about the physical dictionaries where you look up words, but that's actually a pretty good analogy. I think I'll roll with it. So we have a dictionary. What does it contain? Well, words and definitions for each of those words. When you want to know the definition of a word, what do you do? You look up the word in the dictionary and you read its definition. This is exactly how a dictionary works in Swift. When you store data in a Swift dictionary, you need to give it an associated key. Usually this is just a string, but it doesn't have to be. In order to access that data, you look in the dictionary for that key, and then you get back the value or data for that key. These pairs of data and its associated key is called key value pairs. When you compare this to a physical dictionary, it's very similar. In that example, a word would be the key and the definition would be the value or data. Another analogy would be a coat check or a dry cleaning service. You drop off your jacket, this is your data, and the person gives you back a ticket. That ticket is the key. And when you give the ticket back later, you get your jacket or your clothing back. This is exactly how a Swift dictionary works. Now let's jump into an Xcode playground and see how the Swift syntax for a dictionary looks like. So here I've got a brand new playground and we're going to take a look at the Swift syntax for working with dictionaries. First up, we're going to declare a dictionary. So let's say var, we'll use a again. And this time we're also going to use square brackets, just like before. And also just like before, a comma separates each element. Now back in an array, an element was one thing. But as I explained in this lesson earlier, a dictionary contains key value pairs. So each element inside a dictionary actually consists of A, a key, and B, a value that is associated with that key. So let's, here I've already put a comma, so you know I'm gonna put two elements into this dictionary. First, let's specify a key. Now, a key could be any data type, but typically they are strings or integers or something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna use a string here and I'm going to specify key as my first key. And to specify the value that is associated with this key, you use colon. And then you specify the value. Now the value again could be any data type, but I'm gonna use strings as a simple example and my value is just going to be the string value. So there you go, I have one key value pair in my dictionary. Now I'm gonna have a comma to separate it from my second key value pair, which I'm gonna specify here. And this time I'm going to make my key ABC and use a colon to separate the key from the value. And my value again, I'll just put, um, let's say DEF. All right, so that's my value for that. A good example might be the keys could be license plates, right? And the value could be the car model that is associated with that license plate, or maybe airport codes, uh, because each airport has like a three letter code. So the key could be the code, and the value could be the actual name of the airport. So those are more practical examples. But for this simple example, we're just gonna use these little strings here. Now, in order to declare an empty dictionary, and I'm just gonna show you this right off the bat, square brackets again, and inside you basically specify the data type for the key, followed by colon, and then the data type for the value. So just to follow what I've done up there, it would look like this, string, colon, string. So this is the data type for my key, this is the data type for my value. And then we end off with a pair of parentheses to create a new instance or a new dictionary object that is going to be expecting string keys and string values. All right, now let's take a look at how we access an item. So I'm gonna be trying to access this item right here. So I'm going to type A to reference that dictionary followed by square brackets and inside I pass the key. Remember the coat check example, when you wanna get your coat again, you give them the ticket and they'll give you the coat or jacket associated with that ticket. So right here I'm passing in the key and I expect to get the value in return. So when I try to print this, 
let me run this code. It's going to give me the value, but check this out. It actually returns an optional type. The reason is because I might pass in a key that doesn't exist inside the dictionary, right? So if I just pass in some random key like that, and I do that, you'll see that it's actually nil. So actually when you get back the value from a dictionary, you have to check if it's nil and you have to unwrap it before using it. And you've learned how to do that in the previous lesson. So actually when you're accessing an item, it, you should do it something like this. So let uh, value equals that. And then before you use value, you should check the, if value is not equal to nil, then you would go ahead and print out the value and remember to unwrap it first as well. So if I run this and get back the actual value in this way, you know, if you pass in a key that doesn't exist, you're not going to be trying to use nil and potentially crash your app. So that's accessing an item in your dictionary. So I'm going to change this back to key. Now checking for an item. Let's say that you're not sure if a certain key value pair exists in your dictionary. So then you would just use an if statement and you would check is a, you know, the key that is in question, let's say, I'll use this example again. If that is not equal to nil, then this key exists. Else, this key doesn't exist. Right, so here you've checked that this key exists and so you can safely now retrieve the key. You know, let, uh, how about let the val uh, value equals that and then I can safely unwrap it because I already know that uh, it is, it actually contains a value. So now some of you might notice that this kind of looks like optional binding, right? You're checking if something is not nil and then if it's actually not nil, you're assigning it to a constant here. Yeah, you can actually use optional binding here. So let me change this statement uh, to combine essentially this and this, right? So it would be, let me just rewrite it here. If let the value equals that, and then that. So let me just get rid of that. The key exists and the value is now assigned to my constant, the value. Else, key doesn't exist. So that is the optional binding way. And then down here, you can just print the value. All right, so that's checking for an item. Now let's go ahead adding items. Well, adding items is really easy. So you reference your dictionary, which is A, and then you basically specify the key that you want to add. So this is maybe a new key, and then you assign it the new value for that new key. So I'll just call this new value. And it's as simple as that. Now updating items, let's say you want to update the value for a specific key. All you have to do is specify a key that exists or you know the one that you want to update and assign it something different. Maybe updated value. It's very, very simple to do. And removing items, same exact thing, very easy. So if you wanted to get rid of that new key value pair, so you specify the key for the key value pair that you want to remove, and then you just assign it nil. And that will actually remove that key as well from the dictionary. So as you can see, working with dictionaries is pretty straightforward, but they're so useful because as you start working with third party APIs and third party services, most of the data that gets returned to you will be in the format of dictionaries and arrays. So the last two lessons you've learned working with these collection types is really, really important. 
I wanted to take a moment to discuss the differences between arrays and dictionaries and when you would want to use each of them. I'm going to use three different criteria, ordering, finding items, and the purpose. So the first criteria is ordering. When you store a collection of data, if the ordering matters, then you definitely want to use an array. This is because the array is arranged in a series of slots, each with an index number. So it's perfect for data that needs to maintain a specific sequence. This is different from a dictionary where there really is no concept of ordering. You're just putting all of your key value pairs inside it. The second criteria is finding items in that collection. If you need to access specific items out of your collection of data, a dictionary is intended to help you with that. You give it a key and out pops the data for that key. You can still do this with an array, but you're gonna need to know the index that that item exists in. And if you don't know the index of that specific item, then you're gonna have to look through each single slot of the array to look for that item. And that's not very efficient. Now, the last thing I want you to consider is your intention or purpose. When you need to store a collection of data, I would default to just using arrays because they're for general purpose. A dictionary is more specialized for the purpose of storing data with the intention of looking up a specific piece of data later on. For example, if you just retrieved a bunch of employees from the database, and even if you don't care about the ordering of it, I would still put them in an array. It's just easier to iterate through them and go through that array later on if you need to do some processing for each employee. But now let me give you an example where using a dictionary would really shine. So let's say that you have a photo gallery app and it displays a ton of images. If the user visits the same screen several times, I wouldn't want to download that same image data many times. Well, this is where I could use a dictionary. Each time you download an image, you can actually store it in a dictionary with the key being the image name and the data being the image data. Then the next time you're going to download an image, before you download it, check your dictionary first by passing in the image name as the key to see if you've already downloaded that image before. If you have, then you're going to get the image data back and you can just display that image data without having to re-download it. This is a great scenario to use with a dictionary. Now let me give you guys another analogy. An array is like a photo album where you start from page one and you kind of just flip through it looking at the pictures and you get to the end of the photo album or you could always flip to a specific page in the photo album and look at those photos. Now a dictionary is instead kind of like a physical dictionary where you look up words to find their definition and it's not usually a book that you start reading from the front to the back. So in this lesson, you learned all about dictionaries, how to declare them, how to put key value pairs in them, how to access the data and how to remove the data. You also learned about when to use arrays versus dictionaries. Now to get more practice with dictionaries, I highly recommend that you check out the worksheet below. And if you want to read the official documentation from Apple's Swift language guide, I'll link to that below as well. Now that you learned about these two collection types, you're well equipped to keep track of data. Now in the next lesson, you're going to learn various techniques to walk through your array or dictionary and process each item or do something with that value or data. This is useful in so many ways and I'll explain it all in the next video. All right, I'll see you there.